Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the latest edition of the Jake's Take with Jacob and Share podcast, the fifth anniversary season. I'm your host, Jacob and Share, the chief content producer and writer of jakesake.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. If you're watching this on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe. Now, if you listen to this on our audio platform, please give us five star ratings. Please download this episode and more. I'm very excited. Welcome one of my favorite challenge of the new, this new generation. You've probably seen him on Netflix, The Circle. And more recently, two seasons of the challenge, The Spies, Lies, and Allies, talk about a mouthful, and Battle for a New Champion. And as of today, he has won three dailies and won one elimination. And as of this recording, he has over 109,000 Instagram followers and 110,000 Snapchat followers. So please help me welcome Ed Easton to the podcast. Jake, thank you for having me, brother. Pleasure to be here. I'm excited to get into it and start talking the challenge, baby. Absolutely, absolutely. And Ed, I just want to let you know, you're one of my favorite newbies from this, um, from the 30s. So there's a lot of people. So I'm just, I'm also new as well. Pauly, Natalie, Jay, they all brought me in. So awesome. I love that. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And this is a special episode two, 275. Whoa, holy smoke, salute, congratulations. Thank you so much, my friend. Cheers to that. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, yeah, so let's get started on your reality TV journey. So when did you get interested in reality television? And how did that passion evolve a desire to pursue and to actually audition for a show? I'll tell you what, it all happened completely by accident. I did not watch really much TV at all, definitely not much reality TV. And um, it was crazy. Just one day, somebody stumbled onto my Instagram. Uh, I think they sent a message to myself and my brother. They were like, hey, we're coming out with this new show on Netflix. Uh, I'm a scout in the Philadelphia area trying to find some some local people here. We came across you guys uh, on Instagram. You guys seem like fun people. You seem silly. At the time, I was not like anything big, just your normal, I guess, well, like in college at the time, yeah. I think I had 2,000 Instagram followers, like normal college kid. And uh, I don't know how they stumbled across, but they were like, yeah, we saw your page. And I just post a lot of dumb stuff. It's just really goofy. And they're like, hey, you seem like a fun guy. We'd love to have you apply for this show called The Circle. And I'm like, no way. This this can't be legit. Like uh, this new upcoming show, it's nobody's ever heard of it. So I message back. I'm like, yeah, send me an application thinking they're not going to send an application. Sure enough, they did. It was a couple questions. I filled it out. They're like, hey, we'd love to interview you. I'm like, okay, this looks pretty real. Uh, so I had an online interview. I had an interview in Philly. And I guess that went well because they're like, Ed, we want to fly out to LA for the final interview. I was like, no way. So it was completely by accident. Wasn't looking for it at all. It just happened to fall into my lap. And I don't know. God works in mysterious ways. I guess that was his plan. He wanted he wanted that on reality TV. So it, it happened. It was I, I couldn't, you know, I I, won't, I probably wouldn't have got it if I went looking for it. You know. Absolutely, absolutely. So not only did you were on reality TV, but your mom was all. You also competed with your mom too. That's Damn right. Me. So when so was your reaction when they said, "Oh, by the way, Ed, you congratulations, you made it to the circle." But we're pairing you with your mom. Yeah, that was, it was a moment of like, wow, that's incredible. And also like, oh man, like <laughs> now I'm going to be cooped up with my mom in the same room for God knows how long this game's going to go on. But it was great to have somebody, you know, there with me through the experience, especially somebody I'm close with. Like my mom is my number one. So having her with me, like it, it was just, it made it a lot better. It made it, you know, um, not as, I guess, lonely because obviously the circle, you're just alone in a room, like nobody to talk to. You're just staring at the walls all day, pretty much hoping a conversation pops up. So to have somebody there and it be my mom, it was, it was a very special thing that we got to do together. And absolutely too, because I feel a lot because you look at Survivor, they're on the beach and even though they're paranoid, you look at the challenge here, you're all together. And with same with Big Brother, but like with the circle, it's like, you're just you and you alone, which is like, 
definitely it feels like passed away all it's a, i i always explain to people that like it's a, it's an experience like no other because sometimes people will like you know they'll be alone but it's like i got my phone to play on or i got some tv to watch or you know i can go on the computer or walk outside and check out the day but like we couldn't open a window to our uh, little apartment we were in no tvs no clocks no radios no like no n- nothing it was just sit there in silence all day and hope you have a chat pop up because the, you were just biting at the bit like waiting to talk to somebody and it feels like it's even though you got so you're not you guys were not the only people but your brother as you mentioned your brother mitchell also was in his last following season so did you did you and your mom give him advice regarding the circle oh yeah definitely yeah so they casted us for the first season and then he ended up doing the second season so we have pretty much the whole family on tv now and uh we gave him a little insider scoop you know to try to get him a little bit more prepared to get the job done since obviously me and Tam didn't end up with the outcome that we wanted. I mean, it was the, the cars were a little stacked against us, us being the last people to actually come onto the game. So at that point, it was tough to try and make relationships where people had already formed relationships for days and weeks before that. So I think we did as good as we could have done, um, given the circumstances. And Mitch had another uh, kind of – he came in a little bit earlier than we did, um, but still – he wasn't in there from the beginning, uh, which I think kind of hurt our chances. It definitely did. I, I wish I would have been in there sooner, you know, from the get-go. Um, and we tried to explain that to Mitch, but you you don't get to pick when you go in. It's just you're thrown in and you don't know when. It could be the beginning, could be the end. You have no idea. I totally agree. So now you are also a trailblazer as well because you are also the first – Circle cast member to cross over to MTV's The Challenge. So when did he hear about The Challenge? And when were you like, okay, I'm game in? Yeah, that's right. So like I said before, I really didn't watch much TV, like at all. Um, So I came home from The Circle. And uh, once that came out, it was way bigger than I expected. So many people watched The Circle. And I got tons of messages from like, friends, family, fans, and they all kept saying, like, Ed, you did great on the circle, but, like, the challenge, you would probably do really well on that because I was a big workout guy. I competed in college sports. I did sports my whole life. I I was big into fitness. I I have a pretty smart mind, too. So everybody, I guess, saw that and were like, oh, we want to see how this guy would do on the challenge. So I had person after person reach out and be like, oh, Ed, we really think you would do great on the challenge. At the time, I had never watched an episode of The Challenge. I just kept saying, oh, yeah, I'll have to check it out. I'll think about applying. Yeah, that'd be great. I would love to one day. And I didn't really know what it was. A couple months go by, and who reaches out to me but The Challenge? I get a message saying, hey, Ed, we saw you on The Circle. We think you'd be a good fit for The Challenge. Are you interested in applying? So before I even got the opportunity to, you know, go watch the show and reach out and try and apply myself, they reached out to me. And I'm like, you can't make this up. It happened with The Circle. Now it's happening again with MTV, The Challenge. Like, this is like, I don't know why this is happening, but it is. So, of course, I'm a yes man. So they reach out. I'm like, yes, I'm in. Let's do it. Let's go. And I didn't even watch the show yet. So I didn't know what I was getting myself into. But I kind of like that strategy of it where I would rather go in, not know anything, and then form my opinion of the show and the game and the strategy and everything right then and there, rather than trying to plan everything ahead of time. I think that probably because, you know, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry, right? That's that's the old saying. So rather than try and plan everything out and, you know, well ahead of time, I was like, throw me in there. Let me just see how I do. And you came in because that season, if I remember correctly, had a lot of people that you were extremely well known. You had CT, you had Anissa, you had Millionaire Mitchell herself. So you had a lot, you had Corey, you had Nelson, you had a lot, and you had the newcomers, and then Michaela and Michelle and Tommy Sheehan too. So you were, you were had a really good cast with you. So yeah, that was a solid cast right there. There was uh, some heavy hitters for sure. 
So it must have been very interesting learn, knowing to navigate because our, one of my favorite images, I said, you and Tommy going side by side and all of a sudden explosion. Oh, I love that picture. It's us just running with like a big old ball of fire in the background. So cool. I love that shot. And that's how we always explain the challenge. Everybody's like, what's it like? I'm like, I'm literally an action hero in like the, the biggest action movie. Like that's what it feels like. Because you're running down a runway, there's helicopters, explosions. It's crazy. It's it's awesome. But sadly, the action had to stop when you faced off against Kyle in the pole wrestle, and you lost, unfortunately. I know. That was a real tough moment. It, it didn't go the way I wanted, and I think it was just because I was underprepared. Um, I think they kind of tricked me into picking him some way or another that there was a there was nothing set up in the sand and usually there's something set up um so when you when you watch it back it, it they show the pole in the sand and then I pick Kyle but in reality I was like TJ there's there's nothing here it's it's empty usually I get to see before I pick somebody he's like ah you got to pick someone so I'm like all right Kyle and he was like ah you shouldn't have picked Kyle because tonight's going to be a pole wrestle. And I was like, damn it. All right. Well, I think they might've had that loaded up in case I picked Kyle. But anyway, I was excited. Um, I didn't know really what a pole wrestle was because I should have watched the challenge before I went oh, on. Oh, by the, the way, you should have saw Wes and Derek's pole wrestle and Josh and Derek's free V8. So you can get a good idea about how those two were going out. Yeah. Yeah, so my strategy was not great. I went out, guns blazing, used all of my energy right away. Kyle was smart. He's done the pole wrestle a number of times, and he knew to weather the storm. And I don't know how he did it, to be honest, because I don't know if you remember in the clip, but there was a, a point where I'm just, like, bashing his head into the ground. He's holding on, and I'm lifting him up and just, boom, head in the sand and it was it was a pretty intense battle, and I came to find out after the fact that he was like, dude, they sent me to the hospital because they thought I broke a rib. Turns out they were just bruised. They weren't broken. They let me still compete, and I was like, ah, oh, so I gave it to you pretty good, even though I ended up losing. But, yeah, I uh, all my energy was gone after the first, I don't know how long we went at it, five, ten minutes, and he weathered the storm, and – his strategy, yeah, he he beat me. He he did good. He did good. That's good to hear because the thing is, I still can't remember if it was like did it, because one of the, the things I remember the most about other challenges like Joss and Derek's pole uh crazy eight, both of them said it was two hours. It was like almost a two hour fight. What was that? Was yours shorter or longer than that? Um, no, definitely wasn't two hours. I, I mean it's hard to remember like while you're in there because time moves so differently. Maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Maybe a little bit longer, 15, 15 or so minutes if I had to guess. But yeah, it was, it was an intense 15 minutes. A after it, both of us were just like our hands. You couldn't like move your fingers at all because your forearms were just absolutely on fire from gripping onto the pole it, it, it was one of the weirdest feelings i've ever had absolutely so we got to talk about this current season battle of the new champion in this sport 39 so what was your reaction we saw jay we saw a soft we saw melissa big t uh nourish raven and emmanuel and you didn't see the cts the corys the bananas the brass the carmarias the Paulies. what was going through your mind when you said, wait a minute, how come they're not here? Where are they? Yeah, so it was kind of interesting where, for me, I did know a few people, obviously, from 37. Um, Michelle, Corey, Emmanuel, Barna. Um, I think that was everybody. Yeah, so I knew I recognized a few people from season 37. And I knew of other people, but I just haven't met them. So I'm meeting everybody for the first time. And I'm like, all right, it's all new people. Um, there's not any vets here. Like everybody's, you know, on their first or second season or well, well, second now it's second or third season. Um, but yeah, it was kind of interesting because I felt I got along great with a lot of the older vets, which I kind of 
I'm not mad that they weren't there, but like I would have accepted them coming with open arms because I know I'm pretty cool with them where a lot of these other people are not very cool with the vets. So for some reason it just worked out like on 37, like I was very tight with all of like the veterans. I don't know why they just, they liked me. They took me under their wing. So it would have been great to see them back. I think it would have been better for my gameplay where the vets would have quickly shut down a lot of stuff that was going on uh, between the alliances that formed. I don't think a lot of it would have happened if they were there. They would have been like, yeah, uh -uh, we're done with this and just started getting rid of people. Um, And I think they would have allowed me to hang out and just, you know, bro it out until the end. But I mean, ultimately, like, I was like, wow, most of these people really don't know what they're doing. And I think competitor wise, I was probably one of the strongest competitors, not to toot my own horn, but yeah. out of the 39 cast, I was looking around and I was like, yeah, I got this, you know, very, I felt pretty confident. All righty. So what was your reaction? I know when we got to the chaos ring, when you brought, when they said, oh, by the way, surprise, here comes CT, here comes Kara, here comes Jordan. Here comes Brad, Terrell, Tori, Casey. What was your reaction when you saw those vets? Yeah, so, vets? I mean, for me, I was kind of happy to see them um, because I really didn't think that they were going to pick me to go against. Uh, it was just, like, cool that they showed up, that they were even there. So, I was more so, like, excited. I know some people were shitting their pants, like, uh-oh, like, they're here, they're coming for me, they're going to get me. But I was pretty at ease most of the time because I really didn't expect any of them to try and call me out. Just because, like I said, I got along great with all of them. Um, and even the, the guys I didn't know, I know like um, like Brad, Darrell, like th this was the first time I was meeting these guys. And when they came out there, they were like saying hi to the people they know. And then they were like, oh, and Ed's here too. Like, always wanted to meet Ed. He seemed like a good guy. And I was like, yes, like, they know who I am. Like, this is awesome. Like, it seemed like right then and there, like, boom, friendship solidified. Like, it was it was cool. Now I got to say this. I, I, a lot of, there's, as you know, social media has been a blood. Um, when it's a certain car, Maria showed up, I heard everybody in the house was against her. Yeah, which was interesting because... Kara and I are actually like friends. Her and Paulie have uh, been up to Philly a few times. And myself and my fiance, we actually went out hanging out with them a few times. We went bowling. We went to a concert. So out of like everybody on the challenge, Kara and Paulie are probably the ones who I've actually hung out with the most, you know, in like a social friendship setting. So when Kara came out, I was like, oh, no way. Like, that's awesome. So I was pretty cool to see her. I know everybody else didn't really want to see her, but me and her, we had a couple words. She was like, you better root for me, even though everybody's against me. I'm like, no, 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 I got you. Like, <laughs> All right, so you had three wins this time around. We all fall down, getting take, and dark tide. Out of those wins, what was the mo which win meant the most to you out of those, out of those games? Um, I would say, I would say the individual win because that too, that was the first, um, challenge of conquest. So for it to be the first challenge of conquest, we're now individuals, no longer in a team. And it's like, boom, I take the first one. It's like, obviously I'm a dominant force here. And then, yeah, come to play. It didn't play out great after that, but, uh, that one felt good because I was like, this is all in my hands. Everything that happened was because I was physically strong swimmer. I was a good paddler. I was good at the like ring toss. Like, boom, you can't take that from me. Whereas in some of the team wins, it seemed like teams were trying to just sabotage other teams. Sometimes you got stuck with a team that wasn't so great or didn't even want to try. Or So the, the, the team ones were a little iffy. I, I like the individual one. I got to say the first group with the giant, it felt like, I, I'm sorry. I had a laugh. I had a laugh for the first two. With everyone trying to get up that ladder and everyone trying, and the first time when you arrived, it was just like, okay, that was like pure chaos. Oh my gosh. The first two challenges, I think they 
purposely made them impossible for us. Like it was, they, they were probably the two hardest things in the entire show. I'm, I'm not even kidding. They were like, they said they had people tested out. I'm like, they must've had the Navy SEALs like complete in these missions because there is no way that they would have like expected us to beat that. Like the times it, it was, it was impossible. It was fun. Great to take a crack at, but they were tough ones. And you also got to experience something that a lot of people in the challenge rarely do, the reunion. And as you know, 39, there's a lot of social media back and forth. I actually had to drop to tell everyone I had to drop out because some of the criticism towards wanting to like a soft is getting kind of towards anti-Semitic yeah. in my test. So I was there. So I told everyone I had to pull out. Um, so what like what was it like going to Amsterdam and was the and what were the modes like when it was like before taping and after taping? It's such a strange thing because I feel like a lot of the people from season 39, it's like they get on like when it's showtime, either to film the show, to film the reunion, and it's almost like they uh, excuse me. It's almost like they flip a switch and they become like completely different people where like the night before everybody's hanging out, having a good time. And then the cameras come on and they're like, what do you guys have to say? And they're just going at each other. People who are like, they say, Oh, we're friends outside of here. We've known each other for five, 10 years. Like we're best friends on the outside world. I'm like, no, you're not. Like I would never speak to or about like my best friends in that way. It's just amazing. Some of the stuff that comes out of their mouths once they're like in the spotlight it's just like i barely say two words at the reunion because i don't really have much beef with people but it's just crazy how these people just go at each other's necks i'm like if that was my friend like uh uh-uh like i'd knock you out dude like you you are not gonna do that to me no way so to hear some stuff that happened i was like whoa like i was taken back and I was, when I was ready, I'm almost ready to go enter the ring myself. But however, at the same time, I think a lot of them, if I start to go to the insult, number one, the blog will not be celebrated. The fifth anniversary season would be over. Number nope. one. Number two, I don't want to be blackballed by the entire challenge community. And number yeah. three, um, I'd rather have a career like Regis and Barbara Walters, two of my heroes, that celebrated years instead of 15 years yeah exactly so i mean very careful not to go into the mud yeah it's just they were getting way too personal and like attacking each other and i'm like it's not a good look it's not a good look like uh uh-uh yeah i have a feeling that 39 is shaped like the thing is it'd be interesting how they interact with at challenge manias because i got to give our friends scott and derek a lot of credit so yeah. you had the opportunity to go to several challenge manias. So what was it like working, meeting the fans one-on-one and interacting with the other cast members, especially like the OGs and other people before you? Oh, I love it. Challenge manias are a blast. We're actually doing another one coming up uh, in Philly in April. So I'm really excited for that. I can't wait. I've been talking to Scott and Derek. But um, yeah, it's like so cool to actually just like get up there and have like a normal conversation just like back and forth with the fans. because. Sometimes, like, I'll run into people just, like, on the street or at the store or at the bar, and we'll have, like, these, like, conversations where people are like, oh, my gosh, Ed, tell me everything, this and that. And But, like, to get all of these people in the room and just have, like, an open discussion where it's like, all right, yeah, like, we get to answer all the questions that everybody has, you know, versus talking to, like, one person, like, here or there. Like, I love to get the opportunity to, like, share that experience with all of these people like and i gotta give a big shout out to scott and derek because i've appeared i've gone to a couple of events as well for Scott challenge media they have set the bar for so many other reality tv meet and greets yes yeah. the thing is it's very well organized i've had the opportunity to be with a lot of people and i really hope if you have the opportunity to come to st louis or to kansas city we gotta come yeah, I would love to travel around and do a couple of them. I know some people, they go to, like, every one. I don't know um, how they do it. I think Liv was one of them uh, after season 38. 
I saw her pop up at like every single challenge mania. I'm like, how are you doing this? You're traveling like every weekend to like every one. It was crazy. All right. So I got a couple of questions about you, um, about the, about the challenge before we start. Have you thought about who do you want to compete against or ever shows that you want to see like dream cast members to be, to comp- that you want to compete against on like the traditions of the challenge? Hmm. Who do I want to compete against? That's interesting. I feel like I'm just open to, to compete against anybody. Like I don't have any like sworn enemies where I'm out to get this person or like, you know, people where I'm like, Oh, like I hope this guy's on so I can either be on his team or be against him. Like, I feel like I'm just very chill. I'm cool with everybody. I would actually like to see some more circle people on the challenge. That would be cool. Because I feel like me being the only circle guy, whereas like everybody else, they have their big brother alliance, their survivor alliance, but there's no other circle people. So I would like to have a few circle people on there just for the sake of creating my own kind of little alliance going. Um, But yeah, I don't have any like sworn enemies or anything where I'm like, I want this person to compete against like. I'm just very open and I love the competition. I love the the sport of the show. I'm a very competitive guy. So I really hope that they do bloodlines because I would love to see the Cal Furies versus the Easton's. Oh, that would be good. That would be good. Like East coast, just like bulldog boys. Like, cause me and Mitch are very strong. Uh, The Cal Fury boys are very strong. It's like, that would be, a great one. And we, we've talked about that before getting the four of us together for something like it, it would just be a blast. I think fans would love it. Like, and plus you have a fifth one. And you also, if we had six, your Bob and also Cara too. Yeah. <laughs> that would, that would be fun. I'm real. Hey, challenge gods, please do this. Please bring back bloodlines. I would love to see that. Yes. All righty. So, when you're not competing on reality TV, you are inspiring your followers, including me, with amazing fitness geeks. Because the guy I gotta say this, I have been in awe of your strength. Seriously, the power tire deadlifts and squats, lifting up a car. Yeah. My I, God, you are super strong. Yeah, I do a lot of goofy things. I find just random, like, heavy household objects or things laying around the yard, and I'm like, can I lift this? Can can I do this? Let me try it. And I just make silly videos of it. (laughs) I gotta say this because that content, my friend, is amazing. And like, I gotta say, you lifting up the couch, holy moly. Oh, when I'm just bench pressing the couch. I'm like, please don't drop it. Please don't drop it. I know. A lot of it's goofy items where they're very tricky to hold. And a lot of it's not even that heavy. It's just very awkward. All right, so I know, how did you get interested in your fitness? I guess just growing up doing sports my whole life. Um, I was big into martial arts. So I think that's really what started it was when I was four or five years old, I got into martial arts and they had us doing like real fitness. Like we were jogging laps, doing push-ups, like hitting the bags, actually grappling. And it's like, you're four or five years old. It's like, this is intense stuff for a, a little kid. So I think that's what really started the the, the fire in me. Um, and then I went on to do a bunch of different sports. I did soccer, uh, basketball, baseball, track and field was the big one that I got into uh, during high school and college. Uh, and then college is when I really got serious into the more weightlifting um, and just kind of bodybuilding. Like I, I, I just like being big and strong and muscle and ah, so um yeah i just always i've always been doing sports like my whole life and and i gotta say this you could be the challenges version of hercules yes that's what i'm talking about yeah because the thing is i also do a lot of weightlifting crossfit because it's definitely hard for me to do that because i'm always the last person to finish and i definitely do that but like the past couple weeks have i've been doing this off and on for a long time so but it's been, it's helped me a lot. And I've been sending people like, it's like people like you, it's people like Polly and Jay and Derek and Jocks who inspire me. on the That's what I just never stop. 
just keep doing it. Stay consistent. Like, especially too, because it just, it becomes like a passion. It's like, if I go a day without going to the gym, I'm like, oh man, like, what am I doing? I got to get to the gym. I skipped. I like, it's it just my, my schedule's off. It's like you develop that passion and you love to do it. And it's just, I don't know what I would do without the gym. Somebody uh asked me the other day, which would you rather give up the gym or motorcycles? And I was like, oh my goodness. I, I started losing my mind because I love both of them. <laughs> it's like a Sophie's choice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then so I gotta say your content's amazing. So how long does it take you to create your social media content? Um, some of them take me a while. Uh, I'm not the best like video editor, uh, so when it comes to that stuff, I, I might sit there for a while, like splicing clips together and getting the captions right. Um, but usually I can film them in a couple minutes. Like I'll do a few takes and I'll have the video, and then I'm sitting there for the next like two hours just trying to get the video right. So I need to get a good video editor to, to help me with this stuff. I agree. Social media can be very tedious. Oh yeah. So we got it. So one of the last we one last question I want to talk to you about is like, have you thought about now that you got the challenge and the circle under your belt, have you thought about let's try because I've seen a lot of your stories and there and people are just mistaking you for like Survivor, Big Brother. Have you have you been thinking about putting your hand in and like competing on those shows or any other shows? I mean, I'm definitely open to it, but I just feel like I like the the just raw intensity of the challenge, like the the, the bashing, the physical competition. Whereas like Survivor, I would definitely give it a go, but I think I would starve first off because I eat a lot. I don't know if you realize how much I eat in a day, but I think I would probably quickly starve. I mean, like I, I, the amount of calories I eat is absurd. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would love to give it a try. I'm definitely open to it. If they would have me, definitely. I'm all in. Maybe Jay and Michelle could actually say, hey, can you try our friend Ed? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I gotta say you'd be really good with that. And also I have a feeling you might be right. You might be one of the first people voted out. Yeah. Alrighty, so let's turn to positive. So what is your favorite social media app? You have a large following on Instagram on Snapchat and also other stuff. So what is your favorite app that you like to connect fans with? Probably Instagram. I feel like that's the one I'm on the most. That's good. I'm also on I'm also on Instagram as well. So, one of the last one of the last questions I would love to ask you is: There are a lot of people apply sending applications for like Big Brother, Survivor, and so Amazing Race, and even Circle, who want to, and even Squid Games a challenge for who like they want to go to the challenge next. So, what would your advice be for anyone who wants to go on a reality TV show? Oh yeah. Um, one thing I always tell people because people do ask me like, Ed, what should I say? How should I make my like interview tape? Like, well, what if I say the wrong thing? I always say, be you and be you like 110%. Like, don't hold back at all. Don't worry about saying the wrong thing or like, they want to see your personality. So some people try and come off like too formal and they're like, oh, like, I would love to be on this show. Like, please give me the opportunity. It's like, no, like talk how you normally would talk. Tell stories about you, let them know who you are as a person and just like have fun with it because that's when your personality is really going to shine through and they want to see like those big personalities. And like, I know so many people are like, oh, like I just want it to be perfect. I'm like, it's not going to be perfect. No matter what the interview, no matter what tape it is, it's not going to be perfect. But if you have fun with it and you let your personality shine, like tell a story, tell something you think's funny and like the people are going to love you. So that, that's my advice. Be you 110% you and don't hold back. Don't worry about saying the wrong thing. If you need to say a curse word, say a curse word. If you say something stupid, roll with it. Like Awesome. Really good advice. Ed. So last question. Are you ready? Yes. Where can my audience connect with you on social media? Oh, they can connect with me everywhere. So first off, Instagram, um, Ed610 underscore. 
Um, Snapchat's my other big one that I'm on all the time. Uh, my Snapchat name is Sexy Dash Ed. Uh, I think I made that name when I was like 12 or 13 when Snapchat came out. I stuck with it. Uh, so it is what it is. Whatever. Um, YouTube, Ed610. Uh, Twitter. What is my Twitter? I think it's... Is it Ed610? I don't use Twitter much. So if you're trying to find me on Twitter, I go on and check it like every couple weeks. Um, but yeah, I'll have to get that for you. Uh, I'm not really on TikTok. Uh, those are the big ones. Facebook, uh, not really. I don't have like a Facebook page. I just have like my personal one. But Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube. Awesome. So, guys, how do you miss an episode of the Jake's Take with Jacob and your podcast? Visit our channels on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Podchaser, Spotify, and Spreaker. Once again, it's Jake's Take with Jacob and Ishar, J A C O B E L Y A C H A R. Now, are you on social media? Because I'm on social media too. Facebook, Instagram, Threads, TikTok, and YouTube. Jacob Elishar, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. And guys, want to know who won America's Got Talent Fantasy League? What's going on with the Masked Singer? Want to see my other episodes with Challenge Alumni, such as Dre, Joss, Ollie, Derek, Cyrus? Head over to jakes-shake.com. Once again, jakes-shake.com. Ed, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank Jake, you, so thank much you for having me. I had a blast. Thank you so much, Ed. I appreciate it. And guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Goodbye.